The Power 40 podcast is an uplifting faith-based podcast that speaks to all that's going on in our world. Our goal is to share inspirational real life stories and experiences from notable guests around the country on matters that touch us all. The number 40 symbolizes a period of testing, trial, or probation. And we all experience trying times in our lives, but it's what comes from these times that make us who we are. As we depict periods of people's lives where 40 has played out, we learn the goodness that comes from perseverance, determination, and belief. I'm your host, Danica Tramberg, joined today by Damien, who is truly a one in a billion survivor who has turned obstacles into opportunity and the seemingly impossible possible, working tirelessly to provide others who face seemingly insurmountable barriers with motivation, tools, and a voice. So thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Well, self-proclaimed bionic unicorn, I've heard. (laughs) You've endured dozens of surgeries, but that's really never stopped you. Everyone's on the edge of their seats right now. What happened? Why why have you had all of these surgeries? Yeah, why bionic unicorn? Who who proclaims such a thing as bionic unicorn? So uh, I am actually internally basically metal from hip to ankle. Uh, from childhood bone cancer. I've had 26 knee replacements and revisions since I was a kid. These things are called limb salvages. So they spared my limb and my right leg when I was 13 in seventh grade. And then when I got re-diagnosed. Creating a ramp like that is just so inclusive for everyone. Like you said, not only people that needed to get on the beach, but even the community who use it for other reasons. So do you have other plans like this to create uh different things in the city or beyond yeah well we also ramped up and like i said earlier sometimes it's a build sometimes it's just equipment so we ramped up a a location called red arrow park here in milwaukee so now everybody can ice skate so we put four ice skating sleds down at the park and a little story about that most amazing thing was the parks told me the first person to ever use it was a woman who just considered herself clumsy she said (laughs) They noticed she was on the sidelines and not participating with her family, just watching. Mm-hmm. And then they asked her, what, what, you know, why aren't you playing? And she basically said, well, I'm, I'm just clumsy and I'm a little scared to go out on the ice. And they said, well, we got these really cool new sleds from the Ability Center. You want to try that? And she did. Now everybody played. So she wasn't left out with her family. And we think that's beautiful. That's wonderful. That is. However, the equipment we place in places meets whoever, where they're at, and they can play together. That's our mission and that's our goal. And we also did Veterans Park here in Milwaukee on our beautiful lakefront so that everybody could bike it. So there was a, a, there's a place called Wheel Fun Rental that rents out all kinds of bikes, but if you had a lower extremity you know, disability uh, or mility, mobility impairment, we put hand cycles there. So now everybody, instead of just taking a ride, certainly you could have participated. You could sit in one of the four person bikes and somebody could pedal for you and you could just go for a ride. But we think it's important that people actually engage and get active you know, be fit, active, and healthy in play. That's part of our mission. So we put hand cycles down there. So now if you have a lower mobility impairment, you can get a hand cycle and you can actively bike the path again with your friends, families, colleagues, peers, whoever you want to. That's so cool. I I just love seeing everything you're doing. You're obviously an inspiration to so many people. And just as we close out today and reflect on the power 40 in our lives and maybe trials we're going through or have overcome, I think we'll understand that and life will continue to experience, you know, some good and bad that life throws their way. But 40 is also significant in regards to time. So, Damien, if you had just 40 minutes to impact the world, where would you start and what would you say? Whoa, that is a deep question. <laughs> if I had 40 minutes to impact the world, what would I do and what would I say? Mm-hmm. I think I would maintain the message that I have been for a long time because that's what I learned walking out of Children's Hospital when I got diagnosed. The reality in this space of the mission I serve is that we all belong to one demographic, and I call that TABS, and it stands for Temporarily Able-Bodied. So whether it's disease or an accident or the aging process, the need for greater access or different opportunities is inescapable for all of us. I learned that at 13 years old. I went from being potentially a future star athlete, at least in my high schools where I grew up, right? People were fighting over me. Uh, of, will I go to Brookfield East? Will I go to Brookfield Central? And what sports will he be on? And all of those things when I was just in seventh grade. But then I got cancer. And I went from being that athlete to being in a knee immobilizer, to being on crutches, to being having an ambulatory disability for the rest of my life. So disease caused that temporarily able-bodied status. 
So if I could help everybody understand in my 40 minutes that we're all gonna have the greater need for access in the future, and if we would stop building things that are quote unquote accessible or to code, which is a joke by the way, but created them universal to make sure they meet you where you're at from birth to death, then you'll always be able to get in the door. Then you'll always be able to get to play. Then you'll never be excluded and everybody will always be included. If I had just 40 minutes to get on a platform and share that, that's what I would share. That's so important. And I think, you know, including people in so many different things, not even just what we've been talking about today, but I think that can be applied to everyone in any aspect of their life. Um, you know, just asking your friend to come to dinner, you know, just being mindful of, of other people and, um, you know, having everyone involved and, it's so important. One other thing too, I would just love to get your input on is, you know, you said, you know, going from, you know, could be a star athlete in high school and all this stuff. So I imagine like this identity shift too. like, how did you manage who I think so many people put their identity or worth or value in like what they can do. Like I am a star athlete. How did you manage that kind of identity shift? Uh, it's an interesting question. So I was just coming into my athleticism and understanding it. I think my identity has always been one of wanting to help. I can remember being in eighth grade, going on a family trip and uh, uh, my stepfather gave all of us $50 to spend. I spent more of that money on all of my siblings than I did on myself. I can remember trick or treating. I gave more of my candy away to my siblings and my cousins and my friends than I saved for myself. I've always been a giver. So as much as I wanted to be a professional athlete, as much as I was invited to even train to be a downhill skier, mono skiing, uh, which is for you know the, the um, mobility impairments, an adaptive way to ski, I was invited out in Utah after my first week of skiing to stay and potentially train and become an athlete. I realized that my happiness is in making other people happy. My happiness is in giving other people the opportunity to excel and succeed. That's what fills my bucket. That's what fills my heart. Um, and I don't think that my identity really changed. I've been able to use this to get other people playing, meeting them where they're at in, in the best way they can with the ability they have. Uh, and I think that's what God saved me for. So he, he really created my destiny, my purpose, my fulfillment. And I'll, and I'll, leave, I'll leave that comment with this. I always joke with people and tell them, I would have been real cocky and real full of myself. I was on that road to being like, I'm the best thing since sliced bread before I got sick. And I think getting sick as a child made me just hands down a better human being to develop what my new normal would become. That is really, really great perspective. And, you know, I hope other people see this and get a great message from it. I think um, your whole mindset is really something to be modeled. So thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your story. A pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Honored to be able to share. Awesome. Well, for more information on the Power 40 podcast, stream it on your preferred streaming service or get it at powerofhumans.com. Thank you.